Well, hey, Trinity, we are doing church quite differently this morning. I know that we have been pretty caught up, all of us, with articles, news, all that about this crazy virus going on this past week, but we want to take a moment uh, just to center ourselves and to focus away from all of that and to look right at God. Uh, So will you join us this morning, wherever you are, whether you're at home by yourself, whether you're gathering with your family, whether you are with maybe some of your small group members at your house, let's enter in, let's tune our hearts uh, to what it is that God wants to do uh, in and through us today. So to get us all started, uh, Shelby's going to read Psalm 121 for us. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. You are my vision, O King of my heart, and nothing else satisfies only
God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, and you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, and you know just what to do. God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, and you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do, and I will love you. Lord, my strength, and I will love you, Lord, my shield. Oh, I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever, all my days. I will love you, God. Just want to love you with my life. God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, and you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, and I will love you. Lord, my strength, and I will love you, Lord, my shield, and I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever all my days. I will love you, God. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, our God.
our prayer, Jesus. That is our prayer, Lord, that in the temptation to look to the left or to the right or to be overwhelmed or shaken, God, that you would quiet our hearts to look to you and know that none of this is a surprise to you and none of this is going without you noticing every single person and every family and every situation that feels panicky or out of control, Lord, you are in control. And we can trust you. You are faithful and you cannot fail. And so, Lord, we do look to you. We trust you. Help us when we start to feel shaken. Help us when we start to feel disturbed or discouraged. Would you just quicken our hearts to just set down our phones or set down whatever we're focused on and just say, I trust you, Jesus. I look to you. You are in control. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for giving us the courage to trust you during this time. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so one of the things we're going to do together is a church. Unfortunately, we can't gather, but as a scattered church across our various homes, as we know that churches and Christians and followers of Jesus across the world today are interceding on behalf of uh, what's going on with this coronavirus. And so uh, we want to pray together wherever you are, in whatever ways, and, and to lead us in prayer for not only our church community, but our local communities and all the leaders and the officials as well. Um, I'd like to invite up Pastor Matt, Pastor David, uh, to be able to lead us in that. Matt, why don't you lead us in a prayer? Um, and David, uh, you follow after him. And at home, gather however you want, pray however you want, um, come in agreement with these guys and all of us as we pray together. Father, we praise you in all circumstances. You are good, you are holy, you are all-powerful. You are the perfect picture of love. And God, right now, many of us are distracted. Some of us may be feeling overwhelmed, but um, we want to we be able to see how you are working among us. We want to be able to hear your voice louder than anything else. So, so God, give us eyes to see what you are doing all around us. God, give us ears to hear your spirit speaking life into each of us. Uh, Jesus, you love us so much. You care for each and every one of us, and, and you have gone to great lengths coming into this world, laying down your very life for us. Uh, so God, we just ask that you would remind us to see you for who you are. Uh, God, comfort us and encourage us, uh, especially those of us who maybe are feeling anxious or scared right now. Uh, God, remind us that we are not alone, even if our lives feel disrupted and thrown off, but you are right here with us. Your spirit is within us, God. I want to pray right now for the health of our community. Um, God, I pray for our church, our families, our friends, our neighbors, and our coworkers. God, we ask for your protection, especially for those who are most vulnerable among us. God, we ask that you would help uh, all of us live in a way that would limit the spread of this virus, uh, even if some of us may not be very high risk ourselves. Uh, help us to make sacrifices in order to protect others. And God, show us how to care for and support each other. We pray all of this in the power of Jesus' name. Father, we want to lift up and remember uh, all of the medical personnel, healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, physicians, not only in our, our own community, but around the world, as they are truly on the front lines of, of servicing and, and caring for and ministering to those um, who have fallen ill. Father, we pray that in your power and in your providence, you give them a supernatural, um, supernatural dose of patience, and that they just have such a spirit um, of grace and compassion. Father, we know that, that they start out overworked. Uh, they start out with limited resources. And so, Father, to, um, to bear the burden of care uh, with this virus, um, Father, is, is huge. So, Father, we lift them up to you. We ask you to remember them, comfort them. Father, give them energy. Give them, give them clarity to make the decisions that they need to make 
even as tired as they will be. Father, give them clarity to make prudent decisions for those that they are caring for. Father, we pray for all first responders uh, as well, that they have um, clarity, that they have energy, um, that they are given grace and rest. Father, we pray for leaders everywhere that are making decisions that have tremendous impacts on communities and on quite literally hundreds of millions of people. Father, we pray that you reach out and you you just are with them. Father, that they feel your hand upon them, that they make decisions that are in concert with, with your character and who you are, that you are, are not a God of panic, a God of chaos, but Father, you are a God of peace and of mercy and of grace. So Father, be with all of the leaders as well who will be making decisions uh, in the coming weeks that will affect so many. Father, all of these prayers and the prayers of those uh, brothers and sisters at home and around the world, Father, we lift, we lift them up before your throne. And we can do that with humble confidence because of what Jesus has done for us. And it's his might, in his mighty name that we pray. Amen. And we have certainly been inundated this week with what seems like a never-ending cycle uh, of bad news, but we do have much to be thankful for and to praise God for, even in the midst of what feels like such uncertainty. And to highlight one specific area of that in the life of Trinity, I'd like to invite up Hannah Gansenberg. As many of you know, the foster care ministry held our first big event last Sunday called Find Your Fit, and it far exceeded our expectations. As our team dreamed and hoped um, for what this event would look like, we set a goal of having 30 people in attendance, and it turned out that God multiplied that number to almost double what we expected. What an awesome reminder to us that he is so good, and he does immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. At the luncheon, eight community partners hosted informational tables for our congregation members to get plugged in to serve children and families affected by foster care. The opportunities range from helping to host events at Trinity, which train foster parents and others who work with um, children affected by foster care, to packing and delivering clothes boxes um, with a foster box, um, to becoming a trained child advocate in the court system, to becoming a temporary or long-term foster family, to offering niche services to blessed foster families, like providing meals, um, landscaping, or homework help. We were so encouraged by the enthusiasm of those visiting the tables, and our community partners all commented on the passion and the warmth of each person they met. Thank you for stepping out to love children from hard places. In addition, on March 1st, we took a special offering to support our local DCF office and those who work so hard to love these kids and their families. Again, we were amazed to surpass our goal of $1,000 and received in total $1,788, which will be able to bless this important work. Thank you for your generosity and care for this mission. We're excited and thankful for your partnership in the work that God is doing to bring hope and healing in what otherwise might be a dark place. Now I'll pass it back to Matt to give some announcements. So we know that a lot of our typical events are up in the air right now and that we're going to be worshiping and connecting with each other a little bit differently for the time being. But if you want to stay along with us for all of that, we would love to have you. So you can go on Facebook or Instagram and search us at Trinity NR. So that's at Trinity NR if you want to follow us on Facebook or Instagram. You can also download our app if you go to the App Store and look up Trinity NR. And lastly, you can go to our website, which is trinitynr.org. And if you scroll partway down the main page there, you're, you'll see a spot right there where you can subscribe to our emails. And if you want to put your name in there, you can make sure you'll be along for all the updates because we would love to stay connected with all of you. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Pastor Kirk. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. You know, um... I am so, so proud of our foster care ministry team. I mean, just to see 
70 people from our church showed up. Just bravo. And if there were people in this room right now, we'd be clapping. <laughs> but that's just part of the... Uh, so I hope you're clapping at home for that because that is uh, worth celebrating and our God is good. Uh, but that's just the beginning. I strongly believe that's just the beginning of what he's going to do. And I want to let you know, too, uh, that you guys, even though we are not gathering in person, uh, we can still be giving. Um, you can give online either through the mobile app um, or on our website, trinitynr.org. Um, you can also, if you're not comfortable with either of those, you can give through mail uh, for the time being. Um, but in addition to talking about all of that, I do want to remind everybody, if you are in financial need because of all that's going on right now, whether it is that you're having difficulty holding on to work, finding work, or whether you're having uh, serious repercussions uh, just in your own lifestyle, you need food, something like that, we have people ready and willing to come and assist you. Um, we have a diaconate fund that you guys give to once a month uh, that is ready to be divvied out to those in real need right now. Uh, we are currently developing plans as a church for how to mobilize overall in order to help and assist those among us who are in need. Um, but for now, I really want you to know that we, we want to help. We want to come alongside of you. Please reach out. You can simply email us at info at trinitynr.org or call the church number at 978-664-2416. That's our church office. If no one's there, you can just leave a voicemail. Um, but reach out to us anyway. You can message us on Facebook or Instagram, whatever it is. Um, but we want to be accessible to you. So let me lead us just in a prayer right now for just the general finances of this church. Because God, I, um, in talking to so many people, I've felt the burden. The burden that this whole season has led so many people to. If they're hourly waged and depending on events or depending on uh, the, their companies being open. Or maybe they're working from home and not getting their normal paycheck. I don't know what it is. But God, one thing we know about you is that you see, you know, you provide. That is your promise. And I pray, Father, that we will take a deep breath in the midst of all of this and trust you with each of our financial future in a way that does not make us turn inward, but it causes us to look outward to see how can we uh, give away love? How can we uh, demonstrate your kindness uh, in the midst of even our own difficulty. But God, in the meantime, show us as a church how we can, we can gather, we can rally, we can unite around a common purpose of, uh, of helping to meet one another's need during this difficult time. It's not difficult for you. We get that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I'm so used to people saying amen with me um, after I say amen in this church. So, I'm going to uh, continue in our current sermon series. We're calling Rooted and Built Up, Everyday Habits for Growth. Uh, I'm not going to talk as long as I normally do, um, but uh, I, I do want to share and encourage you guys from God's Word. This is, um, we had all sorts of plans a week ago, um, and it's unbelievable how just a few circumstances can change and all of a sudden all our plans are blown out the window I'm sure you felt that in a variety of different ways yourself. Um, but the thing is, when our plans are uprooted, when we experience things we didn't see coming, it tests our roots. What do I mean by that? If you remember from week one of this whole series, we talked about how we want to be like that tree in Psalm 1, verse 3. The tree whose re roots go deep down into the streams of living water, that no matter what it goes through, what season it encounters, that is able to stand steady and continue to produce fruit in the midst of it. Well, we just hit a crazy week. But I know that for all of us, myself included, my roots have been tested this week. As far as will I trust God? And the question that I want us to ask as we ask this rooted and built up, as we are experiencing various uncontrollable events, how do we remain rooted? How can we be, continue to actually grow, or can we, in the midst of trials and circumstances like this? You know, we just got done singing a second ago, turn your eyes to Jesus. Lord, I look to you. How do we keep our eyes on Jesus even in the midst of uncontrollable situations? 
Well, to start unpacking that, we're going to turn to God's Word. We're going to be looking at Mark chapter 4, a story that might be familiar to many of you. Um, but I want to look at it in a very different way. I find that when we go through different circumstances, it causes us to see God's Word in a very different way. Mark chapter 4, starting at verse 35 uh, to 41. Jesus and his disciples have been ministering all day, and they're tired. But they decide to get in a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee in order to go to the other side, where they'll continue to do other ministry. But their plans don't exactly go as they think. So, if you can follow with me, uh, the words will be on the screen, or you can follow in your own Bible, Mark chapter 4, four starting verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall, or windstorm, came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. How do we handle those uncontrollable events that happen like what many of us are experiencing right now? All of us, really. How do we remain rooted? When we're primarily focused on what we can't control, we can't see the God who is in control. Let me just say that again. When we're primarily fixated, focused on what we can't control, we can't see the God who actually is in control. What's interesting in this story is that if you look at Mark chapter 4, verses 35 and 36, it's clear to me that the disciples had their plans. They, it was a leisure boat across this Sea of Galilee as they continue in their ministry. They just finished some ministry. I like to imagine it was a beautiful day that day. And they had their whole plans set in front of them. What's interesting to me is that a week ago, my own experience was I couldn't have imagined that this Sunday would have been canceled. It is so hard to even think I had my plans. I had my own get-togethers. I had my own stuff. We all did. And then all of a sudden, all of that was just thrown about. And we see that for these disciples. They're on this boat, and out of nowhere, it says this windstorm comes out. Now, the Sea of Galilee, while we call it a sea, it was actually a massive freshwater lake and a large basin with mountains all on the side. And it was certainly common. It's still common today for sudden storms to whip in across the Sea of Galilee from the southwest corner. And because it's a big basin, the winds somewhat ricochet all across this lake, and it's very sudden, it's very it, out of nowhere. And so in this case, the disciples were going calm, and all of a sudden the wind whips in, and, all, and before they know it, water is washing into their boat. Um, and these expert fishermen felt completely out of control. And for the Jewish people... The sea or big bodies of water were foreboding erratic places. If you look at the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, the water was often a spiritual symbol of death. All of this mixed together with the water splashing in and what the water meant, they were completely out of control, even the experts. Which is somewhat similar to what we're seeing this past week. That even those who seem to be the, the go-to people seem to not be sure what to do. And during uncontrollable events, there are really two ways that we can tend to respond. Number one, there were one type of response that this is certainly where I fall in, is that I, when I know I can't control something, I try to control everything. <laughs> I try to read all the articles I possibly can. I dive in and, and learn as much as I can watch every news segment that I can. I get frantic because, man, i got to get this water out of the boat. i got to do whatever I can, even though I know I can't stop the storm. I'm going to try to do something. So internally, 
tied in knots, but externally busy. Because at least i got to give myself the feeling that maybe I can be in control. So sometimes when we're, in it, when we're not in control, we focus on just trying to control everything we can. It's one response. The second response, there are other folks who, in the midst of uncontrollable, they just try to ignore reality. Frozen, or maybe they bury their heads, close their ears, say this isn't happening, this isn't happening, this isn't happening, this isn't happening. I like to imagine there was probably one or two disciples in the corner of the boat, just kind of not sure what to do at all. These are those who simply don't want to face reality, but want to just try to tell themselves, hey, I'm just living another day. And act, or maybe act like it doesn't bother them because they've just compartmentalized the problems over here. But the problem is that neither of those responses notice who is in the boat with them. Neither of those responses stop to actually see who is in the boat. One Their vision is captured by the storm. All they can see is the storm. The other is just trying to ignore it. But neither of them can see Jesus. But when we're primarily focused on the storm, we can't control. We can't see the God who is in control. So where is God? Where is he in the midst of this story? What's interesting to me is that despite whatever we're feeling, this story proves to me that our God is, has never, and will never panic. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what you're going through, our God has never panicked. Jesus has been ministering all day. He's exhausted, and he's back at the boat asleep. I saw a t-shirt the other day that said, Jesus took naps, be like Jesus. (laughs) I want it. Um, But point is, Jesus is calm and completely at peace. But then in verse 38, like a bucket of cold water, these expert fishermen rudely pour all their anxiety on Jesus' head and wake him up. And immediately they're convinced that they are doomed. They say, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Don't you care if we drown? And again, when the storm or when a virus or whatever it is takes up all of our attention, it's hard to see hope. And in times like this, we can't help but to wonder, does God care? Is he he even noticing what's going on? We've all been there when challenges and problems around us are spilling over into our lives and we have no clue what to do about it. We'd like to think that we're more in control than we actually are, but once we finally realize that we don't really have a grip on the situation, we can't help but to say alongside David in Psalm 13, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face? And this is that lament that you see all throughout the Psalms where we say, God, this is not how it's supposed to be. Do something. I can't keep doing it like this. But even though the disciples rudely woke Jesus up and wake him up with all their mess, at least they turned to Jesus from the storm. Our prayers may not be pretty in the middle of something like this. We may be in a state of panic attack even. But at least let's turn and see Jesus. And what I love about Jesus in this passage is that when they wake him up, he doesn't get angry because they disturb the sleep. Nor does he absorb their anxiety that they're spilling all onto him. But what matters most is that we turn to Jesus, not how perfect we are when we do so. We all come to God broken and in need of grace. We all come to him with areas where we struggle to trust him, with fears that seem so real to us. Instead of pretending like we were in control, ignoring the realities of our souls, we can turn to him with all of that. 
Because the amazing thing is, and the truth of the gospel that we all know and believe and trust, and if you don't, <laughs> I want to share that with you right now, is that we have a God who, despite the mess in our own hearts and souls, despite our own sin and the ways that we have turned against him, he has already done for us what was necessary for us to come into relationship with him. We don't have to clean ourselves up before we come. He just says, turn to me, believe, trust. And then after Jesus wakes up, he wipes the crust out of the corners of his eyes, because I just think he was sleeping deep. And it says, he says to the winds and the waves, peace, be still. Now in the original Greek language, <laughs> that original Greek word was a word that a lot of Greek mamas would have used to hush their rambunctious Greek kids. Because basically that original word is hush, <laughs> quiet, sit down. You know, as my mama used to say, be quiet, please, right? Like that, that is in essence what Jesus is saying. It's just simmer. In this moment, the God of Israel, who is the Lord of all history and all nature, is displaying himself right before them. He's the one who spoke the waters into existence. He's the same God who parted the Red Sea to lead the Israelites toward freedom. This man, Jesus, he is that God. And even when we're out of control, he's not. When we're tempted to panic or to bury our heads, the creator and sustainer of it all is at peace. See, unprecedented events like this one, they're actually opportunities for our faith to grow like never before. We'll call this episode here in Mark 4 just another one of those growth opportunities for Jesus' disciples. When he says, after this whole scene in verse 40, he says, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Jesus isn't asking that because he's surprised by their lack of faith. He already knew what was going on inside of them. Jesus is not surprised by our fear, but he's moving us all toward a deeper faith. This pandemic and all of its effects is not good, but a promise that God gives us is that he works out all things for the good of those who love him and trust him. These are the moments that test our roots and give us an opportunity to turn to him. It, it, what's amazing about all of this, as we try to wrap our minds around disease and viruses and what this means for our society and all of that, I had to step back this week and stop and say, why am I afraid of this? When the very same God who silenced the winds and the waves, he also silenced the boast of sin and death. A virus, winds, and waves are nothing compared to the greatest enemy of humanity, which is death itself, that has held its grip on all of us until we've turned to Jesus and said, save me, rescue me. Come do for me what I can't do on my own. In his grace alone, he died our death. And then he did what none of us could possibly do, walking out of the grave three days later. And this is the great news that no matter what happens on this earth, no matter what we experience in this temporary time that we have here on earth, he has already won the victory for us. And we're promised that anything we experience here and now is only temporary because for all who know him, we look now through a lens, an eternal reality that we can always hold on to hope. We can stand firm. We can love with sincere hearts. We can encourage one another. We can look to serve one another out of fear. Why? Because we know that we belong to a God who has already defeated death itself. So instead of absorbing the world's panic or burying our heads in the sand, how can we keep our eyes on Jesus in the midst of all this? 
We're going to have a lot of time at home, most likely, many of us, most of us. How can we use the time we have at home as an opportunity to grow deeper, to grow our roots deeper? Well, for this final part, I want to invite up our discipleship pastor, David Anastasi, and one of our youth leaders, uh, Cindy Town, because I want to talk about what are some habits that we can each incorporate into our lives um, that can allow us to uh, be equipped that even in difficult times, how can we keep our eyes on Jesus? Um, I feel like having you guys up, we need like a fake applause or something going off. Because uh, I'm, I'm grateful to have you guys. Um, but they're, they're going to share briefly about just different rhythms and habits. Uh, both of you guys have shared with me how you've worked on integrating uh, just different ways of connecting with God. And you've been through a lot. You know, you both had your own ups and you've had your down seasons. And yet you have found a way to grow your roots deeper in the midst of that. Would you be willing to share one or two just habits that you've incorporated into your day-to-day, behind the scenes perhaps, that have allowed you to grow deeper? Um, so one of the things that I have started to do is something called centering prayer, where you're just really quiet before the Lord for about 20 minutes. Um, and you're, you're not praying and you're not trying to hear from the Lord, but you're just trying to be still in his presence to really sense him. Um, it's hard to do because, you know, you're thinking about, oh, I need to go to this meeting or I don't forget to call that person back. And so you have a word that helps bring you back to that when you start to get off track. Um, so sometimes I'll just be like, okay, peace, peace, or I'm just trying to center myself. And it's not a time for me to hear from the Lord. It's just a time for me to be sitting quietly in his presence. And what I found is by doing that, that I'm able to hear his voice more clearly all throughout the day. And it's something that you could do, you know, 20 minutes is a long time, but you can work up to that. But you could also do little um, spots of that through the day. So you could do like five minutes at lunch and five minutes before you go to, um, to bed or five minutes when you wake up. So just some time just to sit quietly before the Lord. And then I would say the other thing that I've um, incorporated into my daily life is uh, something called Lectio Divina, where you read scripture slowly, um, just a short passage, out loud, maybe three times. So you really are absorbing what's, you know, the words and what, what's being said in the passage. And then picking out a word or a short phrase that really speaks to your heart. And then journaling on that, what is the Lord saying to you through that? And then taking a few minutes to be quiet. And what does the Lord want to say to you? And then Mm. writing that down. So those things have been helpful to me. Just a follow-up question. When your mind wanders, what do you do to bring your mind back? Because that happens to me all the time, especially when I'm silent or I'm trying to read something over and over again. My mind goes off to a bunch of different directions. When you notice that happening, how do you bring your mind back? Yeah, as soon as... You know, as soon as I notice that I'm starting to do that, I'm like, all right, peace, peace. And I'm just, and even saying it slowly, not, (laughs) when I learned to do this, the person who was teaching it was like, don't go, peace, peace, peace. (laughs) Like, because that just kind of gets you out of the, you know, feeling that you're supposed to be having. So they're like, just gently try to bring yourself back. So it's like, peace, peace. And then just trying to quiet your soul Hmm. so that you're not constantly on go, mm. uh, you know, trying to go. Yeah. So. Thank you. I'm sure the journaling helps too, as far as being able to do something that focuses your attention. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yes, sir. So I, I, you asked for one or two. I've got three, but the third is really quick. I promise. <laughs> um, and so, uh, very similar to what Cindy expressed, um, this week was a uh, a crazy week for a number of people in a number of ways, and. One of them most notably was a capital market, stock and bond markets, and they were all over the place this week. Um, And and traders have a phrase that's called uh, getting small. And so when markets are all over the place and there's a lot of uncertainty, they they pull in a bunch of their money and they only trade what they know and they trade really small. And this week I had to do that uh, with myself and with with scripture and I had to get really small. And so uh, instead of, my normal practice of reading through something like Romans 8, the whole chapter, um, and just letting that kind of wash over me. 
I went to Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Real small, real short, real concise, over and over and over again. Mm. And so I, I got really small in that sense so that I, I was just trying to, um, to not let the, the, the nonstop news cycle um, inundate my mind as much as I could and just keep coming back to that over and over mm. again throughout the day. Be still and know that I am God. And then the second thing that I, that I thought about that I, I don't do in full yet, but I want to put into practice, especially over these next couple of weeks, is as I was thinking about this, I remembered that Paul wrote four of his epistles or his letters from prison. And so we've got somebody that's, you know, quarantined, so to speak, <laughs> in prison, but he didn't let his ministry stop there, right? And yeah. so... He reached out, he was encouraging the saints, he was building up the body, he was edifying the body with his words, with his prayers, he's praying unceasingly. And so um, so these next couple of weeks, what I, I have somewhat of a habit of writing down uh, small group leaders, praying for you by name, and others, I, I want to write that down, and I don't just want the prayer to sort of end in my mind, but I want to be reaching out to them uh, via email or text message, just encouraging um, that same way, I, I understand the social distancing, but I don't want that to translate into spiritual distancing. Yeah, right, right. Relational right. distancing. And Good so point. I want to try to be really intentional in these coming weeks about letting my prayers express themselves as Paul does in an outward manifestation yeah. to people. And then the third one is really quickly, um, not, not if I don't do these things, but when I don't do the things that I want to do, hmm. the spiritual disciplines and habits. I want to try to remember um, Romans 8, 1, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And so we don't have a gospel of guilt, we have a gospel of grace. And so I just want to, in these uncertain times, I want to be encouraging myself and my wife and my girls and, and everybody else that, you know, these are, these are difficult times and we want to always be keeping our eyes on Jesus. But in the moments that we don't do that, let's not beat ourselves up about it. Um, return to Christ, not out of guilt, but out of grace. Yeah, even if it's messy, we even just turn messy. back to Christ. Yeah, exactly. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate this. Yeah, we'll get even more deeply into the whole, how do we develop habits of seeking to love and encourage others in, in the next couple weeks. Um, but man, that, that was right on. And, and very similar to the two of them, uh, one of the things that I've been doing consistently over the past weeks, months, is trying to get up before my kids do and limit the amount of attention I give to my phone in the very beginning of the day. Uh, oftentimes, if I st whatever I look at first, for me personally, tends to frame how I view much of my day from there. And so if I look at the, the, the panicked headlines, I tend to absorb some of that, unless... I've stopped, I paused, and I said, all right, I'll go and I'll read one psalm, or maybe uh, read, I'm reading through Isaiah right now, read a chapter of Isaiah, and then just sit and think on that. Underline something, maybe after that, I'll just, some mornings I'm really focused, some mornings I'm really not. In the mornings that I'm not, often there's something that's burdening me that I haven't really laid down before God yet, and so at that point I'll bring out my journal and I'll start to to write out, God, what, what is it that's so heavy on my heart? And as I start to work through some of that, um, because writing helps me focus, that allows me to start to uh, find him in the midst of that. Some mornings start off with, how long, O Lord? <laughs> I don't know where you are. But one thing that I try to always do at the very end of my time with God is at least to thank him for who he is. To remind myself that no matter what's going on in life, he's still good. He's still holy and worthy. He's still kind. He's still my life. And he's the one who gives true life. Um, so what about you and your family? What are some ways that you personally uh, can think of a habit or two that you can put into place uh, during these awkward next couple weeks when we're at home? Uh, what are something maybe your small group can do and hold each other accountable to do together? Or what is something your family could do? Well, I want to invite up one more person. Uh, to talk about an idea we as a church have uh, for a way that your family, uh, just something fun for your family to do together uh, in these next couple weeks or so. So Hannah, come on back up. Hannah Gansenberg, everybody. 
Um, you need that. And uh, <laughs> I need that. And so share with us briefly, you have this awesome idea for something families can do together uh, this week. Can, can, you, can you give me like a basic intro framework to what this idea is? So we're calling it Trinity Family Bingo, but it's kind of a cross between bingo and tic-tac-toe. So call it what you will. Um, so we want to help families get, get, keep their eyes on Jesus. Yes. Um, but we also want to remind them remind ourselves of who Jesus is in the day-to-day and who Jesus is to us and who he is to our kids and to our neighbors and all of those things. So the way that it works is that you'll get a blank bingo board. Um, You can go to our social media accounts. You can um, check out our our email blast um, for the link. You'll have a blank board and then you'll have a filled in one and you can cut out each little block and paste it in the order that you want on your board that you think will give you the best chance to win. Um, and then each day on our social media will pop up, here is what the um, activity of the day is. So it might be something like, it might say, looking for God in the everyday moments means seeing his joy and making the people you love laugh. Share your favorite jokes today. Better yet, post a video of your kiddo telling his or her own joke. Oh. So we'll encourage people to post it in the comments, and then everybody in the community will get to hear each other's versions of how they're engaging with God, how they're engaging with their family, how they're keeping Jesus at the forefront. You want them to post on the Trinity Facebook page and it's, or at least yeah. hashtag Trinity on the Instagram or something? Yeah, so, so respond right on the post in the comments. So whether okay. it's on Facebook, whether it's on Instagram, you'll see us pop up, here's the activity of the day, in the comments, post what you're doing. And then we'll have a whole thread of how people are engaging. So this is a way we can interact with each other, and families can interact with each other, even though we might be stuck at home. Yeah, so the idea is that we want to build community, and we want to help people to feel engaged and connected while we're isolated, stuck at home. Um, Another exciting part of this is that we don't want to limit it just to people who consider themselves in the Trinity in crowd here. We want you to invite your friends and you know, your people from school, people in your neighborhoods, whoever you know, to join us in this game. And the reason that people might like to do this is that whoever wins bingo gets mailed a special surprise gift. Oh, so there's a little incentive I in see. To, you know, to be part of something. So it's fun to be part and see what everybody else is doing, but it's extra fun to win and get a surprise gift. Yeah, yeah, grow close to God, but you could win, <laughs> right? You could win. Yeah, right, okay. You could win. That is awesome. Now, so how can, if this, if we want to learn more about what this is, is exactly, how can people find out uh, the details or get a copy of this bingo board? Yeah, so go right to our um, Trinity social media. So whether it's Instagram or Facebook, we'll have the instructions, we'll have the links, um, and you can download the, the um, template and print it out. If you don't have a printer, you can make your own little nine box grid and do shorthand of what they are. Um, and then you can just post pictures right on to, to tell us you're involved. Wonderful. All right. And we're going to post every day. Every day uh, in the morning. Just, just every day in the morning and say, hey, this one's today or whatever. And they get to cross it out. Yep. And the way you win is just having three in a row. So be strategic when you decide what order to glue them in. All right. Thank you, Hannah. That was awesome. That was awesome. I can't wait to see some of those pictures. And uh, yet another reason to get connected with Trinity uh, on social media. So just to finish up here today, I found out this week um, there's been a lot of research on early Christian art in the very beginning of the church. And it was fairly common for an early, the early church to depict the big C capital church as a boat in the midst of a perilous storm. And you can see on the image on this page one example of that art. But it's interesting to me because the early church, they knew that life wasn't going to just be a smooth road. They knew that there were going to be choppy seas. They experienced the plague of Cyprian in the third century along with persecution and numerous other challenges. But yet that picture reminded them of who was in the boat with them. So I want to encourage us during this whole season, keep your eyes on Jesus. Whether that means you're keeping worship music playing in your house, or you're taking time set apart to read scripture, to pray, to pray together with other people, to hold each other accountable, to post on Facebook the ways your families are doing this. There's all sorts of ways. I encourage you to just dig in 
and focus on him. So I'm going to pray and we're going to sing one final song together as a church uh, just before we conclude our time together. So Jesus, thank you so much for the ways that you are at work in and around us. And we thank you that none of this has ever caught you off guard, but that you are fully alive and at work in and through this church still. Give us wisdom, God, and, and a sacrificial loving heart like you to know how to look outside of ourselves to encourage uh, those around us and how to not step forward in fear, uh, but to step forward in trust, knowing that all things Pain, all trials are temporary no matter what. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for defeating death once and for all. Amen. Amen. I learned a lot.
sincere love, unafraid, moving forward because we know who's in the boat with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week. Let us know in any ways we can serve you and reach out to you. We love you guys.